Did you know that our forests can migrate? A forest footprint can actually shift half a kilometer per year. And this is in response to a forest's adaptation to its local environment. And a forest will tend to move towards region where those trees are better adapted. And as amazing as that is for organisms that have evolved to grow in place, it's not fast enough because our climate is moving 10 times faster. Let's put this into perspective. You're a Usain Bolt. You're the fastest man on the planet. You can sprint 28 miles per hour. You're limbered up, ready for the race of your life, crouched down at the starting line. And then your competition rolls up. In the fastest production car on the planet, topping out at a speed above 300 miles per hour. The odds are not in your favor. And like you say in raising a Bugatti, our forests are under strain. Forest cover and biodiversity are declining at alarming rates. One third of our tree species are on the verge of extinction. And practically, forest cover loss means less natural regeneration with fewer seed producers and bigger open stretches in between forests are slower to bounce back and biodiversity loss means less resilience less variation within a population means greater susceptibility to pests pathogens disasters and these two forces feed off of each other with forest cover loss driving biodiversity loss, leading to poor resilience and further forest loss. And this, my friends, is what we call a downward spiral. And it's driven by extreme climate events. But today I want to talk to you about solutions because we can jumpstart forest recovery and break out of this cycle with targeted reforestation. I'm talking about getting the right trees in the right places at the right times. And great news, we have global consensus, maybe for the first time ever. We have commitments to plant trillions of trees from the local to the global scale. So problem solved. I'm afraid there's a but, and it's a big one. If we want to plant trillions of trees, we need tens of trillions of the appropriate seed. And we don't have that. Even before these massive planting commitments, we had a seed supply problem. In the US, for example, the US Forest Service is regularly only able to meet about 6% of its post wildfire reforestation targets, in large part due to seed availability. And so what's the deal? Why, why is seed so hard? Don't they grow on trees? <laughs> they do. <laughs> but sourcing seed is challenging, and the tools we have are inadequate for a job of this size and complexity. Today, sourcing seed is a lot like trying to move a pile of sand with a dinner fork. It's painfully ineffective. Let me explain. Every seed supply starts with wild collection, that is collecting seed straight from the wild. And this is a complex multi-step process. First, we have to plan. We have to figure out what seeds do we need and where are we gonna get them? This is a process that can take a few years. Then we wait and watch. We need these seeds to start getting churned out. This is a process that can take one to 10 years, sometimes longer. But finally, your seeds are ready. Now we have to rally up a team of experts, send them off into the remote wilderness for the actual act of seed collection. Our team needs to climb the trees and harvest the seed, cut down the trees and harvest the seed, seems counterproductive, or steal from the squirrels. Once you've got your seed, you then have to go through the process of cleaning. 
about half of your seed will turn out to be dead or rotten. So at this point, you've committed about 13 years of your life to this process, but you're ready to plant. The unfortunate fact is just because you have a seed doesn't mean you'll get a tree. About 90% of your seeds will die. Are you starting to feel the seeds slipping through your fingers? Now, I wanna make clear that wild collection, as infuriating and futile as it seems, is absolutely integral to the maintenance of a biodiverse seed supply. And there are emerging technologies that can help make this process marginally more effective. But today from wild collection, we either go straight to planting, planning out our restoration site, or we can use these seeds to create a seed orchard. That's like any other orchard, but our harvest is seed. And that improves access to seed in the future, but you'll have to wait another 10 to 15 years for your seeds to become trees that produce seeds. Regardless of the approach you take, direct to your project or seed orchard, you're gonna be making big compromises when it comes to biodiversity and seed access. And I wanna reiterate, both of these processes, absolutely fundamental and essential. But even together, they aren't enough. We simply cannot grow and collect enough seed. So if we can't grow it, let's build it with biology. I wanna share with you a new model for seed production to enable access to the seed we need when we need it. And this process involves three steps. First, we need to revamp our planning capabilities so we can help get the right trees in the right places and give those forests a 16 cylinder boost. We need to build the seed from the cell up, creating access to the specific seed we need when we need it. And then we need to establish a framework for translation so we can make seed fabrication relevant across species and scales. Let's dig in. In 60 years, the climate in Boston is gonna feel a lot like Memphis feels today. And that's a big shift for our Northeastern forests. And because climates are moving 10 times faster than our forests can, we need to be able to plan further ahead than we've ever been able to before. A hockey player, Wayne Gretzky, once said in a famous quote, we need to skate to where the puck will be, not where it has been. And we can do this by forecasting how we expect the climate to change and identifying trees that will be equipped to tolerate that change in the short term and the long term. This type of analysis helps us to understand what types of trees we need tomorrow and where we can find those trees today. So we found our trees. Now we need to build our seeds. But first, let's take a step back. What is a seed? A seed has three main components. First, an embryo. These are the living cells that will ultimately become the plant. Nutrients. These power the seedling through its earliest stages of life until it can feed itself. And third, a protective coat that keeps the seedling safe until it's ready to emerge. But what if instead of having to grow these components simultaneously on a tree, we could create them independently and assemble them to generate a fabricated seed? To generate embryos, we need to lean on a plant's natural capacity for regeneration. If you're a gardener, you already know that you can propagate a plant by taking a cutting and letting it root. Well, we can do the same on a microscopic scale. We can take a small biopsy from a tree, isolate those living cells, and encourage those cells to form these plant precursors. And this process enables us to have our seed and bank it too. We can generate a cell line that we can preserve and recover depending on our seed needs. It's like having a seed orchard 
in our freezer. We then take our embryo, we combine it with nutrients and a protective system to generate a fabricated seed that functions like any other. So now we need to adapt this process, we need to scale it. For targeted reforestation, we're interested in building a complex ecosystem, not a monoculture. And so this process needs to work across a tremendous number of species and individuals. We can leverage biological and computational frameworks to help us translate knowledge from one species to the next, making this process relevant across ash trees, pine trees, birch trees, you name it, in a predictable way. Finally, we make this process a whole lot bigger with the right infrastructure so that we can solve massive seed deficits. These are the three steps to a scalable seed supply and the current focus of our team and our collaborators. We are redefining reforestation planning so we can find the right tree and get it to the right place, give our forests a leg up on climate change. We're building seed from the cell up so we can have it when we need it and not decades after the fact. And we're creating a framework for translation so that we can make seed fabrication relevant across species and scales. By unlocking this new mode of seed production, we no longer have to make the same compromises when it comes to timing, access, biodiversity. We can generate what we need when we need it. And fab seed technology can complement wild collection and seed orchards to help us address this massive seed deficit and make ambitious reforestation goals a reality. <laughs> Remember, we need tens of trillions of seed that we cannot access by any other means. Reforestation is a huge job. So let's bring a bigger fork. Thank you.